Hi, I'm John Richer and I work on the ALM project uh, at Cambridge University. We're exhibiting ALMA uh, at the Royal Society Summer Exhibition. So where are we right now? Well, you can see we're not in Chile. Our budget didn't stretch for that for this little video. But we're at the uh, Cambridge University uh, Radio Observatory, uh, just a few miles outside uh, of the city centre. And behind me, we've got some uh, radio antennas, radio telescopes, which form an array. And this is a bit like the telescope that's been put together uh, down in Chile at the moment. Okay, hi, so my name's Rosie Bolton and I'm an astronomer um, also at the University of Cambridge. Um, and uh, I'd like to tell you a bit more about ELMA. Um, so why do we put ELMA at such a remote site? The site ELMA is being built on is at 5,100 metres altitude, which makes it quite difficult to work at. But it's quite necessary because we need to reduce the amount of water vapour in between the telescope and the objects we're trying to look at in the distant universe. The water vapour is bad at millimetre wavelengths because it attenuates the signals as well as disrupting uh, the patterns that come in. So we really want to try and reduce that. So effectively, we're going to 5,100 metres. We're almost halfway into space as far as the atmosphere is concerned. So some things are very similar to what we're doing in Chile. In fact, the antennas are very similar size to those uh, that the ALMA is made of. In fact, these are 13 metre diameter antennas. In, in Chile, we've got 12 metre diameter antennas. Um, you can see we've got several of them, and the way we make images with this telescope is exactly the same as the way we make Im images with the, the telescope in Chile. So ALMA detects radio waves with a wavelength of about half a millimetre. And you might ask, what's special about wavelengths about half a millimetre? That's about a thousand times longer than the wavelength uh, of the light emitted by the sun. So the reason why we're interested in that as, as physicists is that those uh, radio waves of that wavelength, half a millimetre or so, come from the really cold parts in the universe where stars form. So a star forms typically in a cloud of gas and dust that may only be 10 or 20 degrees above absolute zero, that's minus 263 or minus 253 degrees uh, Celsius. That's really, really, really cold. But even though um, that gas and dust is freezing, freezing cold, it still emits a little bit uh, of, of radio waves. And with a very, very sensitive telescope like ALMA, we can detect uh, those waves. So there are two things that we get, one is molecules uh, and one is the emission from the dust particles themselves. The molecules that we detect are very interesting in their own right, we detect uh, radio waves from water, from uh, alcohols, ethanol, methanol, hydrogen cyanide, all sorts of interesting uh, molecules that form in the gas clouds. So the molecules are very interesting because they tell us not only what the clouds are made of, but they can also reveal to us the structure of the clouds, not only how dense they are, how warm they are, but also, in fact, how fast the particles are moving within the clouds. So you may have heard of a phenomenon called Doppler shift, where the frequency of a signal changes its pitch if it's coming towards you or going away from you. Or well, these molecules, as they move in their clouds, they have a small Doppler shift added, which shifts the frequency of the, uh, of the radio waves they emit. And by measuring that very carefully with ALMA, we can work out the speeds of the particles, whether they're going forwards, towards us, what we call blue shifted, or away from us, uh, what we call red shifted. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Samuel George. I'm a radio astronomer at the University of Cambridge. Uh, I work on uh, various software parts of um, radio telescopes. Why do you need software for a radio telescope? Uh, okay, so one of the things that interests me in telescopes like ALMA is uh, there's a large amount of data that comes out of the telescope. Uh, we don't simply get an image from the telescope. We have to do some digital processing to put all the, all the electrical signals from each of the dishes together to make an image. So what are we doing in Cambridge for ALMA? Well, um, we've got a small group of us here who've been interested in ALMA from when it was first uh, talked about, about 15 uh, years ago. And obviously we can't build huge elements of the telescopes uh, here at the university, but what we can do is think about some of the difficult uh, scientific problems that, uh, that you need to solve to make a telescope work. In particular, what we're working on in Cambridge is ways of stopping the stars twinkling, in fact. So you'll be familiar when you go out uh, and watch, uh, particularly, say, uh, Sirius, one of the bright stars low down in the, in the winter, say, or any of the stars on a, on a turbulent night, you'll see the stars twinkling away. Now that twinkling is caused by the atmosphere of the Earth, which isn't smooth, it's all uh, shaken up, and we say it's turbulent, and that blurs the star images. Now the same thing happens uh, for ALMA, so all the radio sources who look at the stars, the galaxies, uh, they twinkle a bit. Now they twinkle actually about the same amount as the 
stars there when you look with your own eyes, but they twinkle a little bit more slowly. Um, so in Cambridge, we're, we're interested in trying to stop this twinkling of the stars um, because of the atmosphere. And the way that we actually do that with ELMA is by, um, by using um, special uh, receivers on the back end of each antenna, which measure the amount of water vapour that there is in the atmosphere above the ELMA antennas. It turns out that if you have the correct software algorithms, you can interpret this data and work out how much twinkling you're getting as a function of time of each of these individual antennas and then put that into your uh, very complicated calibration system to fix the twinkling. And it's actually um, already been deployed on the Alma dishes as they're being built and it's been shown to work quite well, so we're very pleased with that. So it's good to get rid of the twinkling because if you don't, then the map that you end up making, the picture you get at the end of your radio source of your, of your distant object in the sky, ends up being blurred out because of this moving around. Effectively, it's as if it's dancing around your map and getting spread out. And that loses the angular resolution that we're working so hard to achieve with ALMA. So we want to de-twinkle that so we, we improve the fidelity of the image.